Welcome to the lecture slideshow entitled Engine Room Team Management Engine Room Team Management The demands of modern ship operations require that engineer officers need to have more than just technical skills. Engine room casualties are often a result of human factors rather than only lack of technical knowledge. The importance of developing people skills or soft skills is becoming more and more apparent. This course is aimed at developing the human resource utilization and managerial skills of the participants. The course is conducted based on the guidelines as stated in Chapter 3, Table A3-1 and Table A3-2 of STCW 2010 Code. ETM Course Objectives to enhance the engine room team management skills of watchkeepers with the aid of simulators. To develop effective teamwork leading to optimum utilization of engine room machinery and human resources. To provide theory and practical training in the principles of human factors as applicable within the machinery spaces. To support a change of attitude and managerial skills. To enable the engine room team to respond efficiently to changing circumstances and contingencies. Course Topics Error Chain and Error Management Effective Communication Situational Awareness Interaction Between Ranks Time Management Slash Workload Delegation and Planning Contingency Planning Leadership and Decision Making Error chains, maritime incidents, or disasters are very seldom the result of a single event, they are almost invariably the result of a series of non-serious incidents, which is the culmination of an error chain. Causes of maritime accidents, 20% acts of nature and 80% human error. Some incidents and accidents are caused only by acts of nature. But human error usually plays a major part. Actually it's human involvement in errors because there's often not one but a chain of errors. Underlying factors leading to the hazards and risks which lead to errors, increased competition and emphasis on cost cutting. Increasing age of the world's fleet. This can lead to new and strange technical problems. Crews from mixed cultures. Frequent new crew turnover. Types of errors. External errors. Outside one's direct control. Internal errors. Inside our head. Types of external errors. Technical errors. Example. Engines design faults, machinery design faults, structural stresses, component malfunctions, maintenance errors. Errors in information, example. Manufacturer's manuals, inaccurate shop trials, company procedures, language, lack of materials, spares, tools etc. Examples of internal errors Boredom inattention Edge of routine doing the same task repeatedly Fatigue Lack of knowledge Lack of training Indications of error chain development Certain signs in the function of a engine room team will indicate that an error chain is developing. This does not mean that an incident is about to happen. It does mean that the engine room watch is not being carried out as planned and that certain elements of situational awareness may be lacking. The ship is being put at unnecessary risk and action must be taken to break the error chain. Ambiguity may be easily definable or there may be more subtle indications that things are not going as expected. Ambiguity may exist in that two team members do not agree upon a point of action. Ambiguity exists. Of itself it may not be dangerous, 
but it means that there is a difference and the cause of this difference needs to be understood. One of the two team members is losing, or has lost, his situational awareness and an error chain may be developing. Ambiguity may be a result of inexperience or lack of training. The junior officer may feel that he is not in a position to voice his doubts. This should not be the case. Every member of a well-constructed, well-briefed team will feel confident that his doubts or fears can be expressed without his being reprimanded for what may turn out to be, in one instance an unwarranted worry, in another a very pertinent and situation-saving remark. Distraction Distraction, the full attention of a person upon one event to the exclusion of others or concentration upon what is often an irrelevancy can be an indication that situational awareness is beginning to break down, even if only for a restricted period. Distraction can be caused by an excessive workload, stress, or fatigue, emergency conditions or, all too often, inattention to detail. Inadequacy and Confusion A less definable indication of situational awareness is a feeling that the person concerned is losing control of the situation. A feeling that position fixing is not going as it should, that the person concerned does not know what is expected to happen next. This may be a result of lack of experience. Communication Breakdown Poor communications, both internal and external, are an indication that situational awareness may be at risk. Internal communications may be confused by physical causes such as noise, etc. Or be caused by lack of common language or differing procedural methods. External communications breakdown may also be caused by non-common language or plain misunderstanding. Improper watch keeping or lookout. Improper watch keeping or poor lookout may be a result of lack of situational awareness as well as an indication of its breakdown. Within the engine room team organization there can be no aspect more important than a safe watch and breakdown of this situation may lead to the ship engine room being hazarded. Non-compliance with the maintenance plan. Non-compliance with the maintenance plan may result from the improper complaints noted above, and is another indication that the situational awareness is breaking down. Procedural Violation Unjustified departure from clearly defined and understood operating procedures must be recognized as a breakdown of situational awareness. Error management is the practical application of human factors training. It provides essential knowledge, tools, and a framework to enable organizations to understand the type of errors that are occurring and be able to manage the risk accordingly. It is all about learning from low consequence slash high probability events and is driven by behaviors and culture. An effective error management system must create the capability to remove error-promoting situations, improve defenses, enable your people to make effective risk-based decisions in all that they do. Principles of Error Management Human error is both universal and inevitable. Human error is not a moral issue. Human fallibility can be moderated but it can never be eliminated. Errors are not intrinsically bad, success and failure spring from the same psychological roots. Without them we could neither learn nor acquire the skills that are essential to safe and efficient work. You cannot change the human condition, but you can change the conditions in which humans work. Situations vary enormously in their capacity for provoking unwanted actions. Identifying these error traps and recognizing their characteristics are essential preliminaries to effective error management. The best people can make the worst mistakes, no one is immune. 
The best people often occupy the most responsible positions so that their errors can have the greatest impact. People cannot easily avoid those actions they did not intend to commit. Blaming people for their errors is emotionally satisfying but remedially useless. We should not, however, confuse blame with accountability. Everyone ought to be accountable for his or her errors and acknowledge the errors and strive to be mindful to avoid recurrence. Errors are consequences not causes, errors have a history. Discovering an error is the beginning of a search for causes, not the end. Only be understanding the circumstances can we hope to limit the chances of their recurrence. Many errors fall into recurrent patterns, targeting those recurrent error types is the most effective way of deploying limited error management resources. Safety significant errors can occur at all levels of the system, making errors is not the monopoly of those who get their hands dirty. The higher up an organization an individual is, the more dangerous are his or her errors. Error management techniques need to be applied across the whole system. Error management is about managing the manageable, situations and even systems are manageable if we are mindful. Human nature in the broadest sense is not. Most of the enduring solutions involve technical, procedural and organizational measures rather than purely psychological ones. Error management is about making good people excellent, excellent performers routinely prepare themselves for potentially challenging activities by mentally rehearsing their responses to a variety of imagined situations. Improving the skills of error detection is at least as important as making people aware of how errors arise in the first place. There is no one best way. Different types of human factors problem occur at different levels of the organization and require different management techniques. Different organizational cultures require different mixing and matching of techniques. People are more likely to buy into homegrown measures. Effective error management aims as continuous reform not local fixes. There is always a strong temptation to focus upon the last few errors but trying to prevent individual errors is like swatting mosquitoes the only way to solve the mosquito problem is drain the swamps in which they breed. Reform of the system as a whole must be a continuous process whose aim is to contain whole groups of errors rather than single blunders. Effective communication is a process of exchanging ideas, thoughts, knowledge, and information such that the purpose or intention is fulfilled in the best possible manner. In simple words, it is nothing but the presentation of views by the sender in a way best understood by the receiver. Effective communication, we can say that it generally involves sender the person who initiates the process of communication by sending a message. Receiver, the one to whom the message is to be delivered. The principles of good communication. Setting the climate. Interactive. Closed loop. Setting the climate. The chief engineer must set a good climate to his subordinates in order to foster good communication. When the chief engineer is open to his men there would be an effective communication among the team. Engine Department Closed Loop Communication When a message or instruction by a sender has been received by the receiver well understood and confirmed, agreed. See below the example of a closed loop communication. In briefing your team please observe these, briefing guidelines. Make time. Open and friendly. Who should run? Interactive. Define responsibilities. Closed loop. And for debriefing guidelines. As soon as possible. Yourself first. 
positive and negative. Whole team. Interesting. Make plans. Situational awareness, SA, means appreciating all you need to know about what is going on when the full scope of your task, operating, controlling, or maintaining an engine room, is taken into account. More specifically and in the context of complex operational environments, SA is concerned with the person's knowledge of particular task-related events and phenomena. A general definition of SA is that it is the perception of the elements in the environment within a volume of time and space, the comprehension of their meaning and the projection of their status in the near future. SA needs to include the following four specific elements, 1. Extracting information from the environment, 2. Integrating this information with relevant internal knowledge to create a mental picture of the current situation, 3. Using this picture to direct further perceptual exploration in a continual perceptual cycle, 4. Anticipating future events. Taking these four elements into account, SA is defined as the continuous extraction of environmental information, the integration of this information with previous knowledge to form a coherent mental picture, and the use of that picture in directing further perception and anticipating future events. Significance For a watchkeeper, Situational awareness means having a mental picture of the existing interrelationship of location, machinery conditions, configuration, and energy state of your engine room as well as any other factors that could be about to affect its safety. Please refer to sample MIM about situational awareness. It is essential to have a complete awareness of the situation so that necessary measures and actions can be taken proactively, in order to prevent the occurrence of incidents and environmental pollution. Interaction between ranks Working on ships is a team effort. A one-man show cannot run the whole ship. In order to perform operations smoothly and safety on board ships, Good interpersonal relationship among seafarers is a must. Working on ships is not an easy task and dissatisfaction and demotivation can easily be developed among seafarers as a result of various kinds of stresses. During such situation, it is the job of chief engineer slash second engineer slash officer in charge of an engineering watch to get rid of discontentment among people on ship and instill the importance of interpersonal relationship. As the number of people working on board is limited, everyone should try to know each other in order to understand the values, knowledge, and skills each one has. This is the first step towards developing interpersonal relationship on board ships. However, chief engineer slash second engineer slash officer in charge of an engineering watch should take additional steps to ensure that all team members are comfortable with each other both on and off work. Step 1. Morning Meetings, Toolbox Meeting The Morning Meeting which is conducted to assign work to team members, is the best time to get all the crew members together. It is necessary that crew members talk to each other during such meetings and discuss their views and opinions. Each member should be given a chance to provide suggestions regarding improvement of work process and safety precautions to be taken. This activity gives members a sense of responsibility and importance and also works a great deal in enhancing their performance and interpersonal relationship. Step 2. Coffee slash tea breaks. Coffee slash tea breaks if used efficiently can work wonders towards enhancing team effort. It should be made compulsory to get all crew members together during tea breaks to discuss the work in progress and other important things that they feel are necessary. Step 3. 
Onboard Training Sessions Onboard training session is yet another important opportunity to get crew members together to impart important working knowledge or conduct safety committee meetings. Captain and Chief Engineer should arrange the meeting in such a way that maximum crew members are able to participate. Step 4. Spending free time together. It is often seen that post-working hours, officers and crew members spend time in their own rooms instead of getting together in officer or crew lounge. Watching movies and playing games in free time is a solid way to know each other and build great relationships both on and off work. Step 5. Arranging events slash sports day. It is necessary to arrange recreational events or sports days which require crew members to participate in teams. This is a great way to inculcate the importance of team spirit and building interpersonal relationship among crew members. Step 6. Parties and get together. Everyone likes to party and unwind once in a while. Party is a great method to bond people together and improve scarred relationships on board ships. However, it is necessary that they are arranged in such a way that maximum crew is able to participate. Festival celebrations are also a great way to enhance interpersonal relationships between people on board. This is the end of the lecture slideshow entitled, Engine Room Team Management. Thank you.